Great morning to you. We're going to start this week off on a good note. It's going to be a great week. I need you to believe that with me and welcome to Law Life Applicating Word devotional uh, for this Monday, final week of June. The year is traveling at, at a rapid rate and uh, God has been blessing us through this half of the year and I am anticipating greater things. Somebody say that with me. I am anticipating greater things. Uh, coming up in the second half of this year. Uh, today is Recap Monday, so I want to go back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 13, and I want to uh, focus on verse 14. That was probably one of the main thoughts from yesterday's sermon uh, that you can see on our YouTube channel at Assembly Chapel, and uh, for the members, you can see it on our message page. If you have not uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. Abram is uh, now separated from Lot on this juncture of history. Uh, you know, we talked about how they, uh, the, the uh, herdsmen were bickering and, and arguing, and Abram didn't want to go through that with Lot. He said, we'd be brothers, so it's better for us to separate and go our separate ways uh, and, and instead of continuing with this strife and things of that nature. Abram uh, chose peace over, you know, all of the, the, the chaos that was going on between uh, the two herdsmen. And so now the Bible says something that was very interesting to me and that we talked about on yesterday. The Bible says now that uh, Abram and Lot had been separated, if I can paraphrase the scripture, it says now that they have been separated, God spoke to Abram. And the point was how we need to get away from things, we need to get away from people uh, you know, the question was, what is God waiting for you to do before you come to him uh, in, in, in private? You know, Jesus says that we are to pray in our closets, go to our closets and pray. Don't be like the hypocrites who pray out in public using fancy words and big terms, trying to show off their intelligence instead of talking to God. He says, instead of being like the hypocrites do, go to your closet. Meaning, get some one-on-one -on -one time with God. God did not speak to Abram about looking to the north, south, east, and west and, and walking in the, the length and the breadth of the land and everything that he saw and all of the land that he walked in belonged to him as the result of the promise of God. It didn't matter what Lot chose. What mattered was God had already promised uh, Abram and his descendants all of the land anyway. Amen. And, and, and so when we cling to the promises of God instead of the decisions of people, we come out in a better situation. But what I want to talk about today is the importance uh, of our one on one time with God, the importance of our private time with God. And the example here in the text in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 uh, that we used on yesterday, that we put emphasis on yesterday, much emphasis on yesterday, is how we need to shut things down around us and focus on having some quiet, quality time with God. Uh, as I said yesterday, you know, sometimes driving makes us sleepy. If you're not tired while you're driving, you know, shut everything down in your car. That's, that's a perfect time. If you commute by yourself, that's a perfect time to have some one-on-one -on -one with God. Or if, if you're listening to, uh, you know, some gospel music or some spiritually uplifting music, uh, some worship music, uh, you know, play it softly in the background. I Personally, I don't think God minds that. But, you know, the atmosphere that you set in your car, the atmosphere you set in your home <clears throat> is what's important. It's spending one-on-one -on -one time with God. Um, Personally, I've, I've, I've been blessed to work from home, so it's not a challenge for me to, you know, shut things down, spend one-on-one -on -one time with God. Maybe, you know, sometimes on your lunch break, instead of, you know, talking, yucking it up in the, in the break room with the, with, the, with the employees, maybe you could slip away. Now, I am not one who says that, you know, set time limits on, on the quality, quiet time that you have with God. I'm not one to say, you know, you need to lay on your face an hour a day and pray. I'm not one to say that because, you know, a lot of times when people that, I, that from personal experience and people I talk to, when they try to do that, you know, being super spiritual because Jesus prayed for an hour, 
But when they do that, they find themselves snoring, sleeping, minds drifting and things of that nature. Some people may be able to do it, but most of the time they don't. I'm not setting time restraints on your quiet time. I don't I don't believe in that. I don't, you know, to each its own. If you believe in that, that's fine. Jesus had a lot to pray for. Jesus had a lot on him. And I don't think he intentionally went to pray for an hour. I think it lasted for an hour because of what he was praying for. Um, my prayers have, I don't know if my prayers have ever lasted for an hour, but I know that, that my prayers were, were impactful on, on my life and other people's lives that I pray for. And so the, the, the length of your quality time, I don't think is as important as, as your mind state and your heart and, and, and your ability to escape everything in order to spend some one-on-one -on -one quiet time with God. Because, and the reason why I say it's important, again, from yesterday, God did not speak in this magnitude to Abram until he separated himself. The Bible says, when they separated himself, it said God said, and the Bible says, then God spoke to Abram. And, and when I put emphasis on that board, then, it means then God spoke to Abram. At that very moment, after Abram had separated from chaos, you see, one, one, one thing that's going to distract you from having quality time with God is a bunch of chaos around you. A lot of noise, a lot of movement, things of that nature. That's why you need to be still. You know, the, the, we always say, be still and know that I am God. That's why we need to be still. That, that, that is important. Be still. Um, you know, some people, you may think, wash your face, brush your teeth, taking a shower, doing all these things is, you know, quality time with God, and it may be, but there's still a point where you need to just be still and, and, and experience and hear God, feel God, worship with God, communicate with God in a, in a still environment where, where you're not doing anything else but communing with the Holy Father. And this is where we get, this is where we get solid direction from God. This is where we get solid instruction from God, <clears throat> that quiet time that we spend. So naturally, uh, we see, like I said again in the Bible, he says, then God spoke to him and told him to look around, told him to walk around and, you know, told him that, that all of this was his. You, you never know what, what impactful information God will give you until you get that still quiet time. We live in a world that's, that's racing. We live in a world that's racing, but there's gotta be a point where you slow it down and, and say, okay, God, you know, here I am. Here we are together, one-on-one, -on -one, alone. And so, and, th and that is so important. And like I said, it doesn't take a, a, a set amount of time to do it, but what's important is that you get your heart and your mind right and, and focus just on him, just on him. You know, like I said, I, I'm fortunate enough to have where several times during the day I can do it, but I don't know how long it takes every time, but there are certain times in the day that I can do it. So here's your challenge as I close. Here's your challenge as I close. Your challenge is to take a break from, 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 from everything that's going on I don't know how long it'll be, I don't know how short it would be, but take that time to let God minister to you every day. Take that time, Jesus said it, take that time to get into your closet, amen? I'm not talking about a, li a literal, literal physical closet, but if you want to, do it. But that, that closet time is so important in our walk with God, and that is when you shut the world out shut the world out and just focus on the eternal things of heaven. He says he, will, he, he won't withhold a good thing from you. He promises us, us that. He said he will not withhold a good thing from us. The reason why we're not he, getting the good things that he's, he's promising us is because we don't take the time to hear him. Amen. So, so, so stop complaining about, you know, God, God's not blessing the situation and God didn't show up for me this time, this, that, and the other. God is waiting on you. And this is all I said yesterday as well. God is waiting on you to come to him and him alone to shut other things down. 
How many blessings have we missed trying to keep up with what everybody else is doing? How many experiences with God have we missed ripping and running around trying to please other people, trying to show up to their functions, show up to their events and everything? When are you going to say, I need to show up to God's functions? I need to show up to God's events. You know, I need, I need to, to make myself available to him the way I make myself available to everybody else and everything else. Amen. It's all governed by what you want to do. Point blank period. It's all governed by what you want to do. If you if you choose the rat race over the peace of God, then you get the consequences of choosing the rat race over the peace of God. If you choose chaos over the peace of God, then you choose the consequences of chaos over the peace of God. Um, like the little rap song used to say, you can get with this or you can get with that. You know, the choice is yours. So the challenge is choose who you're going to serve. You cannot, you, you, you can't love, you can't serve two gods. You're going to love one and hate the other. So the challenge is choose who you're going to serve, where you're going to put your attention, where you're going to put your focus, where you're going to look for your help from. You know, we, we're too caught up in being entertained. We're too caught up in having um, world worldly uh, fun. Amen. And I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life here, but you can't put the, 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 the parties and the functions. You can't put all of these things uh, before God. And one more thing before I leave, one more thing before I leave. On yesterday, I said, and I understand this is vacation season and I'm not pointing anybody out. But I, yesterday I did say that the same God that you serve right here in your local church is the same God that's going to be there wherever you go. So you are to conduct yourselves in a godlike manner. You are conduct your, you are to conduct yourselves as children of God wherever you go, wherever you go. It's twenty four seven things. So I don't care if you go to the, the the furthest part of this world away from Cascade, Virginia, Rockingham, and and uh, the county that the church is in. I keep forgetting, but. Where you, you can go as far away from there as you want, but guess what? God is omnipresent. The same God that you are to serve here in your local church is the same God that you are to honor and serve wherever you go on vacation. You don't go, you don't, you don't take a vacation from serving God. Let me put it that way. You take a vacation from the norm, and that's good. That's relaxing. That's, that's refreshing. I understand that. I encourage going for vacations. If you can go for a week, go for a week. I encourage it, but I also encourage you knowing that you are still obligated and duty bound to the servanthood of God. Amen. You don't take a vacation from being saved. You take a vacation from everything else, but you don't take a vacation from being saved. So remember that during the traveling seasons. God bless you. Tomorrow I got one more thing I want to talk to you about from the book of Genesis chapter number 13, and then we'll move forward from there. But uh, God's will, I'll see you in the morning. Go out and win the day. Peace and blessings.